Good morning, Manitoba. I'm Larry McIntosh, and I'll be your host for the next hour and every Saturday morning from 8 to 9. Thanks for tuning in. I want to update everybody on Peak of the Market's TV auditions that took place last Saturday at Polo Park Shopping Centre. This auditions was open to children 6 to 12 years old. They could come out, do a, do a commercial with me. I had the carrot mic with me, and they did an audition with me, and we did a screen test, which is now being sent off to the judges, has been sent off to the judges for them to narrow it down to 12, 12 finalists. And then after that, people will be, uh, during July, will be voting in Facebook for the people of four kids that get to do a peak of the market commercial. Now, if they do a peak of the market commercial, they get $300 for their family and $300 for the charity of their choice. This is the exciting thing. We had 312 kids come out to audition with me last Saturday. 312. And I really want to thank the children that came out, but I really want to thank the adults that came with them because obviously everyone had an adult. At the beginning of the day, we had a lineup at 9 o'clock, and they started at 9.30. A lineup from Center Court of Polo Park, if you're familiar with the mall, all the way to Hudson Bay. Uh, there was a three-hour wait at times, so I, I thank the parents and their children for being uh, patient. TechVoc did an amazing job. We got a lot of people through, and by 1 o'clock, we'd pretty much caught up, and it was not much of a lineup after that, but that was amazing. So if you want to see pictures from the auditions, we took, uh, had a photographer there, just go to peakmarket.com. There's 98 pictures of the auditions, including our cameraman, Chad, who's in a lot of the pictures, and Nicole, our uh, producer of the show, is also in some of the pictures. So check it out. My guest this morning is Phil Chiapetta, co-executive uh, of Ross Brookhouse. Co-executive director, is it? Director, or? yes. Director. I say yeah. It was not in my notes, but oh. I thought that didn't make sense. Okay, co-executive. You, know, you, you did a good uh, <laughs> did follow that, through on that. Yeah, we kind of fumbled there a little bit. Yeah. You'll get used to that as the show goes on. Yeah, so how are well, you today? I, I, I'm doing well. I'm really feeling good to be here. And we're, we're thrilled to have you here. Now, we saw each other uh, probably a couple months ago now. You had a men's luncheon. We did. And uh, that's where we kind of thought the idea you'd be a great guest to have on and, and tell the story of Rossbrook House. So maybe tell us, what, what, what does Rossbrook House do? Well, Rossbrook House is an inner city drop-in center, and uh, we've been around since 1976, founded by the late, uh, very wonderful Sister Geraldine McNamara and some young people in the area, and really uh, to become an alternative to some of the negative things that were happening out in the streets that that uh, she was experiencing then, and that's that's how we started. So 19, sorry, what's the 1976. <clears throat> so it's been there a long time. It's been there a long time. Now, it seems to me I heard a story that that building was going to be torn down at one point, and they saved it or something. Is that? Yes, that's true. Uh, about the time that I came, I came in 1980, and oh, well. uh, just in 79, about, they were, they were looking to expropriate the area for a Sherbrook McGregor overpass. And that was going to displace quite a bit of the community and obviously get rid of Rossbrook House. Uh, Sister McNamara was a lawyer. Oh. Uh, she helped uh, form a committee called the Rail Relocation Committee. Uh, one of the members is our current premier, Greg Selinger. He was a member of that and uh, actually did his thesis on the whole process of the Sherbrooke McGregor overpass. And... We uh, the overpass was was stopped. There was a lot of drama at city council and votes going back and forth. And then uh, Bill Norrie uh, really saw the light and sided with uh, Sister Mack and the kids. And the the Sherbrooke McGregor overpass was squashed, and Rossbrook continued and and really has thrived since that period. So you mentioned what what part of the city is it? It's just kind of is it north of the health well, science for, center? For people, uh, yeah, north of the health science center, uh, right. Uh, our building is a converted church right on the corner of Ross and Sherbrooke Street. Hence the name. Actually, I, I was there uh, for ten years already before I realized <laughs> that. And thought, oh my gosh, that's a perfect name. So we're right at the corner of Ross and Sherbrooke, and uh, really just from the corner of Ross because you can look over and see the children's emergency. Uh, that would be the view that you get as you're looking so, south. So you mentioned it's a drop-in center. So it's, it's intended for the youth of the community or? It really is, uh, you know, really started out focusing on, on teens. And because of uh, Sister Mac's involvement uh, with some of the teens through the court system and everything, it was really uh, focused on, on young uh, men in the area, young young guys. And uh, some of the uh, the problems they were having getting involved with the criminal justice system. So really looking to be almost a diversion uh, to that type of activity and, and, and stand in there for them. 
but uh, it's really grown to encompass young kids, uh, male and female. Our stats are pretty well uh, even on that now. And uh, the young kids just started pouring into the building, and we had to expand a little bit and make room for them and get staff in for them. So we really go from about six years old right to 24. Uh, predominantly, the activities are for the about six to 17-year-olds. Basically from that area, that part of town? Yeah, that community, really I guess? The, the Centennial area. And now that is more localized than, than uh, when we started. In the late 70s, they're really... I mean, I mean, that was the reason Rossbrook was formed. There was just so little in terms of uh, resources uh, for young people, uh, recreation resources, uh, after-hours resources, if anybody was in kind of crisis or anything like that. So Rossbrook was pretty well the pioneer into that, uh, into that stuff. Now there's, uh, there's uh, more resources available, and people are realizing that you have to be available after four and things like that. But really, it was kind of pioneering in those days for Rossbrook to be doing that. And you've been there a long time. I, I've been there myself. This is going up to my 34th year. I can't believe I'd ever be saying that. But 34. Uh, so the thing that came out of that is you said it opened it. You were there in 1980. Yes. Which is prior to me moving to Winnipeg. And I came here the first time in 84. But I didn't realize that was so many years ago. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. I, I'm often thinking that way now. <laughs> we'll be right back with Phil Chiapetta, uh, the co-executive director of uh, Rossbrook House, after we take this break. Welcome back to Food and Friends. Manitoba grown asparagus is now available at your local store. Now, this to me is an exciting crop because it's the first crop of the year. We're probably three, four weeks away from the next one's coming off, which is kale and cucumbers and zucchini. But right now in your stores is Manitoba grown asparagus. So to me, it's the first sign of summer. That's great. The other thing is it's a very short crop. And you think about you can go to your store almost any day of the year and buy asparagus, but it only lasts seven weeks of the year. So from the beginning to the end, the crop's seven weeks, and that's probably going to go down to Peru and Mexico and come, come up north again. But right now, you can go to your store and get Manitoba-grown asparagus, and there is nothing better. And if it says peak of the market on the label, you know it's grown right here in Manitoba. We are back with Phil Chiapetta, co-executive director of Rossbrook House. So we're talking off air. You've been there, well, we're talking on air, but off air. You've been there a lot of years. So have you seen a lot of changes in, in, in the in the drop-in center, in the neighborhoods over those years? Or Yeah, I really have. I, I think I alluded to the fact that there was just so little uh, for young people in, the, in those days. And uh, one of the things that uh, Sister Mac did that was a bit revolutionary is she really went out and engaged uh, the young people who were in the area, who she knew were in, in, in crisis, you could say. And she really asked, you know, what was going on. N nobody was ever asking their opinion in those days or, or going, you know, other than uh, uh, them getting almost negative uh, influence put their way. They, they, they were really engaged to, uh, you know, what's going on here? What do you need? And she really f uh, forged that kind of a path for the programming at Rossbrook House. She always collected the guys in that age. You, you know, uh, you would see Sister Mac surrounded by all, <laughs> all these guys. And um, she was a, a, a very strong, uh, tough woman in her own way. But uh, that didn't mean that uh, it was her way. You know, she always... Uh, engaged uh, the young people who were there and wanted to follow their lead and b believe very strongly in that, in that and really change their opinion uh, of themselves through that process. And we, we were, when, I, when I was at the luncheon a couple months ago, you're, you had a couple um, students, I, I don't know, that's not the right word, people that used the drop-in center talk, and I don't know if there were staff there or not. When we did have one of our uh, Let Youth staff, we call it, right. and we do have uh, a program really of developing youth that starts very young. We have uh, kind of leadership programs where they do volunteer work, and then they get a stipend, and they go out shopping and things like that, and it's a great time, a lot of fun. And then, you know, really the path at Rossburg, people start, when can I get onto the junior staff? That's our Let Youth staff. And they get onto that staff, then they're getting paid minimum wage, and uh, they're getting uh, training and all the different work ethic things that, you know, that we take for granted sometimes. Uh, some of them are really are at the point where they're just going out and getting all the kind of identification, uh, so they can get a social assurance number and things like that. And I've seen so many guys throughout the years uh, who, who literally didn't go through that pro process and, you know, become... Uh, young adults and don't have a social insurance number and things like that. That's changing a lot. There's a lot of good programs. Uh, Rossbrook's doing that kind of work. 
so they, they get engaged from a very early age, uh, helping out in the community and then getting their first part-time jobs and sometimes breaking some cycles in, in their family by doing that. The one gentleman that spoke, and I think he was 16 years old, <clears throat> and I don't recall his name, but he, imp- he impressed me uh, because he was talking about how he just started playing hockey a few years ago and how he's going to be playing for the Jets one day. <laughs> yes. it, it, it was it was full, of, but to get up in a, in a, in a, on a stage in front of a crowd of that size showed a lot of confidence. Yeah, I, th- I think that's, you know, when you're alluding to, like, how much has changed, and, and that's changed so dramatically over the years for me. I used to see that... Uh, uh, some of the young people were so inhibited about uh, a lot of things and uh, about their culture, uh, just didn't really dream the big dreams, you know, where it was it was a lot about just day-to-day survival. And now it's so wonderful to see some of the second, third generation uh, really having dreams, you know, the, the, the way we all should have. And, and then we know that something uh, wonderful is happening uh, when you start to hear people talking like the people that you uh, were listening to at the luncheon. And the other gentleman was fairly young. I think he was 12, and I probably have the ages wrong, yeah. but he was talking about becoming a designer, engineer, and yes. he was going to build a basketball court for you down the road. Well, those, those are great stories. Yeah, they, they are, and it, and it just shows that uh, that growing confidence. And uh, when, when people can start to see a future for themselves, I think that's uh, years ago what uh, Sister Mac uh, recognized with a lot of people, uh, the younger people. They just didn't see any future for themselves. Uh, they were looking at... Um, you know, and some of them will be honest about that. You know, uh, if if Rosberg hadn't intervened, they'd either be in jail or they'd be dead. And, and they believed that tangibly would what would happen. But uh, that's changed a lot over the years. A lot of capacity has been built into the community uh, through places like Rosberg House, and you can see that that hopefulness about life is is coming into the area and to the community. And that, that has to be gratifying for the organization and for yourself personally to see people moving on and making a difference in people's lives. Yeah, always. Uh, you know, I sit as spellbound as you did at the luncheon whenever I hear the kids speak uh, and they say the things that you just, you uh, you know it's coming straight from the heart and it's truthful. And you hear that, you feel so good about uh, what's happening. So. We'll be right back with Phil Chiapetta, co-executive director of Ross Brook House after we take this break. Welcome back to Food and Friends. It's time for our recipe segment called Now We're Cooking. Now, you don't need to write this recipe down. as It's today's recipe of the day at peakmarket.com and in the Winnipeg Sun. So you can get all the information from today's Winnipeg Sun or our website. Today's recipe is sausage pan fry. Sausage pan fry. Here's what you need for the recipe. One pound of potatoes sliced. One tablespoon of vegetable oil. Eight large sausages. One red onion cut into wedges. One tablespoon of tomato paste, two-thirds of a cup of red wine, three large ripe uh, tomatoes cut into wedges, one and a half cups of broccoli florets blanched, two tablespoons of fresh uh, basil chopped, and salt and pepper to taste. So this is a pretty good recipe because it's got potatoes, red onions, broccoli, and basil. So it's got lots of veggies in there. Cook the potatoes in a pan of boiling water for six to seven minutes and drain thoroughly and set aside. Meanwhile, heat the oil in a large skillet. Add the sausages and cook for about five minutes, turning frequently to ensure browning on all sides. Add the onion wedges and continue cooking for another five minutes, stirring mixture frequently. Stir in the tomato paste, wine, and mixed uh, wine and mix together. Add the tomato wedges, broccoli, basil to the pan, and mix carefully. Then add the potato slices to the pan. Cook the mixture for about 10 minutes or until the sausages are completely cooked through. Uh, Season to taste with salt and pepper. And this recipe serves four. Again, this is today's recipe of the day at peakmarket.com and in the Winnipeg Sun. And all the recipes on our website or in the newspaper have both metric and imperial measurements. And by the way, at peakmarket.com, we have over 4,000 recipes, including this one. We'll be right back with Phil Chiapetta, co-executive director of Rossbrook House, after we take this break for your 680 CGOB news, sports, and weather. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Food and Friends. Please follow us on Twitter at Peak of the Market. 
uh, for recipes and food and friends guest updates. We have over 100,000 Twitter followers from all over the world, and we'd love to have you follow us too. Again, we're at Peak of the Market, or my Twitter is at Larry McIntosh. We're back with Philip Chiapetta, co-executive director of Rossbrook House. Now, we we're saying during the break, your co-executive director, so who's the other executive director? Uh, Maria Vigna, and uh, Maria had taught in the school program for years. And, uh, it's just built up tremendous uh, relationships with the young people there, and uh, indispensable. We make a good team together. You absolutely do. So pa- paint a bit of a picture. It's it's an old church. Yes. So what, what happens? I remember, I'll tell you what I remember, walking up the steps during that luncheon that we went to that I talked about in the last half hour, and, and some of the, the the guys were out front greeting us, shaking hands, took our coats. It, it was a very warm, welcoming. But tell us what happens when you get inside. Just kind of describe it to us. Yeah, well, uh, on a daily basis uh, during the week, we do have a school programs. So we have three alternative school programs, one of them a junior high right inside uh, Rossbrook House called uh, Eagle Circle. And uh, so school goes on during the day there for the Eagle Circle students, and then at 3 o'clock, uh, they they leave. Some of them stay around for, for after-school programming, but then we're really open for the after-school programming after that. And then we stay open until midnight on weekdays, but every weekend uh, we are open 24 hours. So Friday comes along, we're, we're open 24 hours until midnight Sunday, and then school holidays. So as the summer break comes along, we'll be open 24 hours right until school is back in. And it's really to provide a constant alternative so that there's always some place to go. So there's some place to go, and they can come and uh, obviously stay till midnight. So are they are they walking home at that time of day, or how, how's it? You know what? We've got a couple of vans, okay. and I can tell you, I've had a lot of experience in my life uh, driving kids home and making sure somebody's uh, there to pick them up, or uh, you know, if uh, just in case nobody's home, making sure that they get to someplace uh, else. And um, so we always do that safe ride home, and it, it's become a little bit more uh, important in the later years when the kind of gang culture got. Uh, uh, involved uh, in the area and just to keep people safe you know even if they're close by we'll give them a ride home but uh, I guess earlier I'd been talking about the the area and uh, when I was talking about a lot of other services now at one time we were driving kids all over the city mm. literally from every area deep into the north end uh, um, you know some places you might not even think if they got placed in a in a, in a, in a kind of a, a situation where they're out uh, with a with a family taking care of them, uh, but they still always wanted to come back to the area and to Rossbrook. So we'd be doing a lot of driving. Now it's a little bit more localized in the north end and in central uh, where the kids are coming from. Now you're saying you're open t- 24 hours on the weekends. Yeah. So obviously there's got to be some of there all the time. Yeah. From a staff point of view, that, that's uh, so they sleep there on the weekends, or they have the opportunity to. Well, or, or? Uh, you know, we don't have any beds per se, okay, yeah. uh, but we we've got some comfortable couches, and we've got some uh, places that if you really needed to crash, you could. Uh, most of the time, people will just make it through the night, uh, playing pool and playing cards with their friends, and having a snack and doing things like that, and watching TV and just chatting with staff. So yeah. what are the options for them to do? You, me- you mentioned playing pool, or watching TV. Well, during the night shift, it's it's kind of minimal like that. But mm-hmm. uh, the other options, as well as the school programs, we've just got a range of, um, of programming for really just as the way we started, you know, following the lead of the participants who come there. So we, we ended up with some young mums, really wanted uh, a chance to have some respite and to still get together with their friends. So we created a young mums night. Uh, kids like you you noticed uh, involved with hockey Uh, at one time we had a hockey team Uh, right now we're just really trying to get people skating again and things like that but there's pickup hockey and things like that Um, any any sport really we have a a great basketball league that we actually integrate some of the newcomer population into that program and that's been a fantastic uh, program so we do a lot of different things, and then our, our staffing program, and we've got arts programming, we've got a music program. There's really, you know, if if you want, the more you want to get involved, there's there's something for you there. So for for the the kids of the community, and you're saying as young as six, is that what you said yeah. earlier? Yeah, we'll have them younger than that. But, wow, uh, even that, younger than that, eh? Wow. Yeah. They have an opportunity to be there. It's it's a safe environment right. uh, with other 
kids and obviously staff? Yeah, and there'll always be something going on. Uh, you know, we do have a, quite a fancy kitchen now, and and uh, we cook up some good meals with a lot of probably we end up with some vegetables from Fika the Market in there. And, and you know, that, that that's just uh, great to be able to change those kind of eating patterns and, and, and get some healthy food uh, into all of us. And, um, you know, there, there's just... Uh, a lot of different things to, for them to do and a lot of outings um, you know they'd be, they'd be going out swimming or in the summertime we'll be going out to different parks and out to the lake and just anything that a normal family would kind of do to, to, to make the summer go by and, and have fun uh, we try to do that too with the kids. And, and from your perspective I mean you, you must have saw a lot of I don't I'm going to say success stories I'm not sure if that's the right wording or not over the years and that that has to be pleasing to you and you've been there a long time so you could have gone down to do other things but something's kept you there yeah I, th- I think that's uh, you know we talked about it earlier it, it, it is something to uh, when you see people doing well uh, in their lives uh, it, you know it's it's a great thing to see uh, I also you know the the, the interactions that happen at uh, Rossbrook House are 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 positive you know there's there's uh, something that really keeps you there <laughs> and uh and I think that we all really enjoy the culture of Rossbrook. It's very positive. Like, uh, I, I don't know if you noticed, even when you're there, sometimes people just say, I don't know, there's something about this place. And that's the way it's been for me. Well, and it's funny. I only visited there for an hour and a half or whatever it was, but I had that feeling. Yeah. It, it's And it's probably because of the people that were there, including yourself. You just have a feeling that this is this is a good place, that it's doing good things, and it's helping a lot of people. Yeah, I think, I think that's... Uh, that's in all of us at Rossbrook. That that feeling is with us. You know, we don't uh, often probably stop to think about it enough. You know, and reflect on uh, on what what keeps us there or or the successes. But uh, when we do, you know, it's it's very easy to 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 look at them and, and feel good about them. We'll be right back with Phil Chiapetta, co-executive director of Rossbrook House. After we take this break, we'll be right back. Welcome back to Food and Friends. Food and Friends Radio is now on TV. Each radio show is filmed and will be posted in mytoba.ca later this weekend. So if you want to see the TV version of this show or previous shows, please visit mytoba.ca. That's M-Y-T-O-B-A dot C-A. Thanks to Chad, who's operating the camera, and the teachers of the Broadcasting and Media Arts Program at Tech Falk High School for their involvement in making this all possible. And, of course, thanks to Nicole, our producer, who's making the radio show possible, which is what we're filming, obviously. You can also listen to the audio podcast of Food and Friends at soundcloud.com and at the iTunes store. So just do a search at mytoba.ca, soundcloud.com, or iTunes for Food and Friends with Larry, and all the shows will come up for your listening or viewing pleasure. Of course, Food and Friends is only available because of CGOB and its advertisers, so please tune in to 680 CGOB or listen live at cgob.com each Saturday morning from 8 to 9. We're back with Phil Chiapetta, co-executive director of Ross Brook House. Now, we were talking off-air I asked you the question, how, how is all this great work funded? How does it work? Well, uh, we're a United Way agency. Okay. Uh, that's one of our core funders, uh, as well as the province and the city of Winnipeg. And that's really the uh, sustaining funding of Rossbrook House. But uh, the other, almost half of the funding comes from private foundations, donations, private individuals. So we do a lot of, uh, we're, just, we're just blessed with a lot of really good people who support the organization. So someone's listening to this show, do you do you accept donations from the public? We do. We do. And uh, we have a website, uh, rossbrookhouse.ca, uh, www.rossbrookhouse.ca. And, and if you go there, there's donate buttons. And uh, we work through uh, Canada Helps, and that uh, gets donations to us. Or you can contact us directly and uh, make donations that way. And I had a quick look at your website on Friday, and I recognized a couple of your board of directors. You got yeah. Caroline Hunter, who's a friend of ours. That's your treasurer, I think. Uh, our, our, our financial. Financial, uh, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, the chairman of the finance committee. Oh, well, yeah. there you go. Yeah. So I had the wrong title, but you know, yeah. Yeah, just was there. And Tom Dooley, who's uh, also a friend of ours and, and a lawyer in town, he's on your foundation board. I think he's on it? our foundation. About six, seven years ago, uh, Ross Brickhouse uh, received a sizable bequest, and we were able to start a foundation and. Uh, uh, I, I think it's just about the time that the market dropped off at that time. But uh, 
But since then, uh, you know, we've, uh, we're doing a lot better. And uh, we're just trying to create, um, you know, a source of uh, income so that uh, Rossbrook can be supported into the future. And uh, Tom and some other board members are a terrific group. have been really uh, creating, a, you know, something for the future for the kids at Rossbrook goes. And I'm sure there's other board members that I know, but I'd probably skip through them. I just looked at it real quick. Right. But We actually have, um, you know, uh, some retiring members this year, which isn't that often on the Rossburg board. We're sort of a little different that way, but we, uh, our, our board has been guided for many, many years by a fantastic man, uh, uh, John Guy, Justice John Guy, and uh, he's been the chair, if you can believe it, for 30 years. Really? And he is just retiring this year from the Rossbrook board, and uh, we have some other members, too, who have been very long-term, who are uh, retiring from the board, and uh, we'll be celebrating them at our annual community meeting coming up on, I think that's about June 27th. It's on the website. And, and, I, and I think that says something about your organization, once again, because the people that I've named off and many other people that are on your board, they're asked to be on lots of boards, lots of organizations. People are in demand because of their skills and their their ability and their enthusiasm, yet they've chosen to stay on your board for all these years to help the organization. Yeah, I think, you know, we all get uh, that magic that happens at Rossbrook, and, you know, it's the young people who come there, and you just you just get, uh, it's, it's, it's like something that really engages you. And I think a lot of people are surprised sometimes. They just get a, their toe in the door at Rossbrook House, and then they find out, wow, and, and really that's the way uh, Sister Jerry would get you in, involved. And then uh, after that, uh, the great Sister Leslie Sackman and, and uh, Sister Bernadette O'Reilly were the co-executive directors uh, for really the longest period at Rossbrook for 23 years after Sister Mac died way back in 1984. And they had a way about them, and many people will tell you that I don't know. They just give you a call, and <laughs> all of a sudden you're involved, and uh, then years later you're saying, "Wow, I'm still involved." So, so if you looked at uh, the community in Rossbrook House over the next two, three, four years, what do you see the biggest challenge being? I I think it's really changing uh, people's perception of quick fixes. You know, the the, the thinking that uh, uh, programs can just uh, change people overnight, and looking for successes that are really o- only the kind of success that we're used to seeing, you know, or, oh, well, they became the president of something, or, uh, you know, there's so many wonderful successes that just come in being able to stick with your family, being able to uh, have a job, uh, so many of these things that we just take for granted. And uh, those kind of things take a long time to happen. There's been a lot of pain and suffering in the community that we work with, uh, it's really in, in, in a growing development uh, transition, but things don't happen overnight all the time. And, and, and there needs to be places like Rossbrook and other places that are there over the long run to, to, to you know, when you, when you come back, uh, you fall back a little bit, get back up and start again. And that's the way most people's lives go. And, and you know, we're kind of very honored to be a part of that with the with the group that comes through Rossbrook House. I, th- I think we live in a world, I know we live in a world where everything's very instant, right? So, you know, you send a text and somebody hasn't responded in 30 seconds, you wonder what's going on. It's just the way of the world. So looking at a program like yours, that is not instant. It, it takes time. Yeah. It must must take some patience for people to understand that. I, I think it, 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 it does. Uh, when you get involved, uh, like the people that I was saying, you, you start to get it. And uh, I think people get won over to that way of, of doing business, and they really want to, uh, uh, to be there for people and support them in that way. And, and, and look at the, just the small daily triumphs kind of in the resiliency of people. I think that was one thing that Sister Mac ta- taught us right at the beginning, that the most resilient people in the world are, are the people living right here, you know, the, what they have to deal with and, and how well they do and, and how creative they are, everything. Uh, they're a fantastic group. So, We'll be right back with Phil Chiapetta, co-executive director of Rossbrook House, after we take this break. Welcome back to Food and Friends. My guest today has been Phil Chiapetta, co-executive director of Rossbrook House. This has been a fascinating talk. I mean, I talked earlier about how I went to lunch and learned lots of things. I learned lots today. It's, you do great work. No, oh, thanks so much, Larry. It, it, it's been great to be able to, to be here and tell, tell people about Rossbrook House.
And if people want to find out more about about your organization, what's the website again? Uh, the website is www.rossbrookhouse, all one word, .ca. Rossbrookhouse.ca. And you get all the information there, and, and certainly you accept donations if anybody's is so interested. We so. certainly do. And Well, thanks for being on Food and Friends. Well, thanks so much, Larry. Really appreciate it. Please join me next Saturday when my guest will be Kevin Klein, President and CEO of MyToba.ca. Kevin will tell us about MyToba.ca, Manitoba's one-stop shop for news, sports, and entertainment, which specializes in made Manitoba content. Thanks to Nicole Bonnycamp, our show's producer. Great job as always, Nicole. Take care, and please, don't forget to eat your veggies. <laughs>